Hi, in this video we're going to talk about what's called coefficient of variation. Uh, this is a topic that's explicitly stated in the syllabus for exam P that you're supposed to, to know. So, uh, so let's kind of discuss what, what that is. First of all, the definition, the coefficient of variation of a random variable is defined to be the ratio of the standard deviation of the random variable to the mean of the random variable. So uh, if you have a random variable and uh, I told you what the mean is of the random variable. Let's say I, I said, well, the mean is, is uh, 1,000. Or let, let me say, the mean is 5,000. You have a, a random variable with a mean of 5,000. Well, that doesn't tell you very much about the random variable except what its you know, average or well, the, the long-term average of its observations is. Uh, it doesn't tell you about anything about how spread out the, the things are. I mean, I might have values that are, that are uh, the, the average is 5,000, and maybe the other values are, you know, the, the other observations of the random variable, the other values in the support of the random variable are very close to 5,000, like, uh, you know, uh, 5,010 or 5,020 or 4,990 and values like that. Well, you don't know that by me just giving you the mean. Uh, likewise, I could give you, if I just gave you the variance or the standard deviation of a, of a random variable, it might tell you something about how spread the data is, how spread out the data is. That's what variation gives you a measure of, how, how spread out. So the standard deviation would also give you a measure of that. Uh, but it wouldn't tell you anything about what the mean was. So you kind of have to need, need both pieces of it. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, with this coefficient of variation, then what you what you get then is uh, kind of a bigger picture uh, idea. So, for example, it's it's going to measure what percentage. Well, just by definition, it measures what percentage of the mean the standard deviation is. Uh, so, for example, if you have a coefficient of variation of one half, it says, oh well, then the standard deviation is one half of what the mean is, and so. Uh, if I gave you the mean and the, and the coefficient of variation, then you kind of have a bigger picture uh, idea. And just the coefficient of variation by itself gives you a bigger picture idea of what the, 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 the spread of the data looks like. Uh, generally, you just don't, you might not know, if you don't know the pieces of the puzzle, specifically the standard deviation and the mean, you might not know exactly what the, 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 uh, the spread looks like of the data, but you'll know a general idea just by knowing uh, what percentage of the mean the standard deviation is. Again, if, if the coefficient of variation is 0.5, it's saying, oh, well, the standard deviation is half the mean. If the coefficient of variation is 2, then the standard deviation will be twice the mean. Okay, let's look at an example. Uh, let's say that I have this example, and notice that in this example, all of the point masses are 0.2. Uh, all of the uh, probabilities here are, are 0.2. And when you have all the probabilities are the same value, you have a uniform distribution. And of course, this is a discrete uniform distribution. I would say it's a discrete uniform distribution on the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because that's the support of the random variable. And now I'm interested in calculating what the coefficient of variation would be in this. If, I, if, I, if I'm tasked with that, then I need first the mean, and the mean being just the sum product. Uh, I'll it, leave it to you to see that the mean is three. And then I'd, I'm going to use the fact that the, uh, well, first I'm going to calculate the variance and then get the standard deviation by taking the square root of that. But the variance I'm going to use as, uh, I'm going to calculate as the second moment minus the square of the first moment. I just got the first moment of three. The second moment, then I'm going to square the values of cap X and then take the sum product. And when I do that, I'll get an 11. And then when I subtract off the, uh, the square of the mean from 11, I get two. So the variance is two, which makes the standard deviation a square root of two. So in this case, the, uh, the coefficient of variation would be the square root of two over three. That would be the numeric value of the coefficient of variation. Okay, let me change the example up a little bit. Instead of a uh, discrete uniform distribution, let's determine the coefficient of variation for a continuous uniform distribution, cap X, over the interval from 0 to 5. So in the discrete case, when I had a discrete case over the, over the, the, the set of points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, notice that all of the, um, uh, all of the probability mass functions uh, all of the point masses were constant, so the probability mass function was constant. And that's, that's exactly what defines a uniform distribution. And, and in fact, this is, uh, again, be, this was a discrete, but now I'm in a continuous case. And the fact is that for 
uh, uh, uniform distributions, no matter whether you're in the discrete case or the continuous case, uniform random variables, I should say, can be characterized as those random variables for which the probability mass or the probability density function is constant. If you're talking about a discrete, ran a discrete uniform uh, uh, random variable, then the probability mass function is constant for a uh, continuous uniform random variable, the pro probability density function is constant. So I've got this, uh, that this continuous uniform distribution tells me that the PDF is constant. Uh, it's over the interval from 0 to 5, so that's the interval over which it's a constant. And so the uh, piecewise then, I'm assuming that you, you just, anytime you have a random variable that's defined over an interval, you assume that it's the, the density function is equal to 0 when you're not on that interval. Okay, so that's what the function is going to look like, uh, you know, piecewise. And then uh, re recall, I can calculate the c value, the constant, the, the numeric value of the constant by using the fact that the area under the curve is going to be 1. So if I integrate from minus infinity to infinity of the density function, I get 1. But minus infinity and infinity, uh, when I plug in this particular case, minus infinity, infinity become 0 to 5, and uh, the density function is, is just that constant. And so when I go through the, uh, the calculation here, um, you know, when you integrate a constant over the interval from 0 to 5, you just, uh, you'll, you'll just get 5 times what that constant is. And that's got to be equal to a 1 for this to be a, a, a probability density function. And so the constant in this case is going to be 0.2, 1 fifth, or 0.2. So uh, from the information that's given to me, I know that this is what the, uh, the, the density function would be, a 0.2, uh, when the x value is between 0 and 5. Now the general notation, I, I, I made a comment a little while ago, uh, this is going to be, the general notation is that I will write a cap x and that little tilde uh, sign, I'm going to read that as cap x is a uniform random variable over the interval from, from a to b, in this case I put an a to b uh, uh, here, or you might say that uh, cap x follows a uniform distribution over the interval from a to b. So I made a comment uh, earlier in this video, I, I, I let it slip, I said something about a, a distribution, a uniform distribution, and I kind of got ahead of myself. This is just general notation and general terminology uh, that we're going to use. It, uh, to say that cap x is a uniform distribution over an interval is the exact same thing as saying that cap x um, is a uniform random variable uh, over the interval. Okay, and so uh, the general fact here is that when you have a uniform, uh, uh, you know, this kind of generalizes what we just what we've already done. If you have a uniform distribution interval, uh, uniform distribution over the interval from a to b, then the density function is going to be a one divided by b minus a. You just take the length of the interval. Uh, that, it's, uh, that it's uniform over, and you take the reciprocal of that, that's what the density function is going to be uh, while you're, you know, for, for x values between a and b, and it's zero otherwise. And normally, you don't see the zero otherwise. You'll just see something like, uh, something like this. That if, uh, so this is, this is kind of notation and terminology that I'm going to be using uh, throughout the rest of the course. Uh, I'll say cap x follows a uniform distribution over the interval from a to b, implies that the density function is 1 over b minus a, and what's implied here, what's understood, is that this is the density function uh, for x values between a and b, over which the support of the, you know, for the support of the random variable. And of course, it doesn't matter whether you include the, or not include the endpoints. We've talked about that with continuous random variables. It doesn't really matter what's happening on the, uh, on the endpoints there. Okay, so now let's go back to this. Finally, I've got enough information or enough uh, uh, um, uh, terminology and notation to, to do the problem. So let's determine the coefficient of variation for a continuous uniform random variable cap x over the interval from 0 to 5. That's my definition of the coefficient of variation, the ratio of the uh, standard deviation to the mean. So because I've got this uh, 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 continuous uniform random variable, uh, over the interval from 0 to 5. I know the density function is just constant. It's 1 over 5 or, one, or, or 0.2. And then the mean, I'll, I'll calculate the mean first. The mean is just the expected value of the random variable, which is going to be generally the inter, uh, integral from minus infinity to infinity of the product of x times the density function. 
The density function here is going to be a 0.2. Again, this is defined over the interval from 0 to 5. So my limits of integration now uh, reduce to just a 0 to a 5. So I got a 0, 0.5, a 0.2x dx. Um, integrate 0.2x, you'll get a 0.1x squared evaluated from 0 to 5, and you'll get a 2.5. So my mean is, the, the mean for this random variable is 2.5. I need the second moment because I, I want the very, uh, ultimately I want the standard deviation, but that's the square root of the variance. So I'm going to calculate the variance first by taking the second moment and subtracting the square of the first moment, first moment being 2.5. Now the second moment is, here's the general definition of the second moment. Once again, the limits of integration become 0 to 5, and the density is 0.2. And so when I go through my integration here, I get a 0.2 over 3 times an x cubed that I'm uh, evaluating from 0 to 5, and go through the arithmetic here, and I got a 25 over 3. So the variance then would be the 25 over 3 minus the square of 2.5, which I get to be 25 over 12. And then uh, I want to take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. Uh, so the standard deviation would be a 5 over the square root of 12. And now I've got uh, everything that I need for the uh, coefficient of variation. It's this uh, 5 over the square root of 12. That's the standard deviation divided by uh, the mean, which was 2.5. Uh, I'll leave it to you to show that that reduces to a 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so um, that's uh, a general idea of coefficient of variation, coefficient of variation, and uh, we got, got a little bit of stuff about continuous uniform distributions and some notation and terminology in there. All right, I'll see you in the next video.